man oh man into the badlands season three episode 13 wow black lotus white rose guys we're gonna get into this please make sure that you watch this whole video welcome by the way if you are new here this is the best community on youtube Guys, I have something very important to share at the end, so make sure you stay with me because you do need to see this information now. I don't even really know where to start. I guess we just pick it up where it takes off with Sonny being at Razor Ridge and finally Sonny meets Kanan, who I'm shocked because I just knew that if she was going to have a connection to the Black Lotus, that she would be a shot caller. She's not a shot caller. She's a subordinate. Magnus is diddled around in her head, dude. Got her mind all twisted up. And we actually have her trying to convince Sonny that Magnus's cause is the right cause. But it's cool, though, with that connection because she does take us on a journey back. And we do get to see the connection between Sonny and Pilgrim when they were younger. Which I do have to say, I think this is the first time I've said anything negative about the performances here. But I do think the performances of the kids in that were horrible. That's just me. I gotta be honest about it. But it is interesting what we find out, isn't it? about him as a kid, especially the fact that he was breeded to be a killer. It was his destiny to be a killer. Now, this is super fascinating for a lot of different reasons because we see that he kind of goes on to fulfill that destiny as an adult. When Quinn finds him by the Rabbit River, he actually becomes the quintessential killer in the Badlands, the region in the Badlands that's known, that's revered even for killing. But even then, we can see, even from episode one, how he starts to resist that. He starts to have a little seed in his mind that this is not what I want to do. And then, of course, we do know the arc of what happens, and he rejects the whole thing about killing for other people. He tells that repeatedly to people that he doesn't kill for others, but yet he was bred to do that as a little boy. But that same kind of mantra was present in him when he was a little kid because he could not kill Magnus. Now, the thing about that that's interesting is that Sonny, even though he was bred to be a killer, there was something inside of him that did not want to take that role. But look at the ramifications of what has happened when he did not take that role as a little kid. When his father told him that you need to kill him and Sonny resists that, Sonny does not do that. And we have all of the events that have happened now as a result of that. That's got to be heavy on Sonny's shoulders. And it was really interesting when we found that out. Now, for me, that was a bit of a curveball. I didn't expect anything like that. And it did make me think about what the Black Lotus were trying to do, even though, trust me, I'm not a friend of theirs, but they saw the potential of what kind of hazard Azura could be. And I agree. When you look at what Pilgrim's trying to do, it, Azura is a threat. So we get kind of that curveball thrown into the story in episode 13, which I think is really, really interesting. I want to jump now to Baji because everybody was wondering, well, what's going to happen to Baji? How's he going to make it out? Now, my theory was wrong, you guys. I had a theory that somehow Kanan would come in, see them, and he would actually heal both of them. A lot of you guys are right because a lot of you guys said Ankara was going to do it. But I was like, nah, man, Ankara's dead. They both dead, as a matter of fact. Neither one of them are healing anybody. Someone's going to come in. But I was wrong. Ankara, I guess she had enough within her to heal Baji, but it was not enough to save herself. So we do know that she actually brings him back. Now, let's jump a little bit and talk about the Master and MK. I'm done, man. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry. And everybody else in the community, that's your guy. MK's your guy. I'm done with MK. Man, can you believe that? I couldn't believe it happened that way. Now, I didn't trust that MK was down for the count. When the master knocked him back with that fourth blow, I was like, listen, you, you, you better break his legs or rip his head off or something because that's not quite enough. To see MK come from the back and stab her like that, I'm like, you son of a... I, oh man, I'm sorry guys, I want him to go. I want to see his head roll across the floor. I don't even want redemption for him. What kind of person does that make me? Does it make me a monster? Maybe. But... I was really, really upset about that, but I do feel like that's an interesting transition for MK's story. My question to you is whether or not you feel like that completes his descent into darkness or you still feel like there is a chance for him to be restored to the MK that we saw in earlier seasons. 
I have no idea how to answer that question. I really don't know. That is a question that's posed to you in the community, what you think about that. But I wouldn't be mad if that sucker's head rolled for what he did. It is interesting though, because it does kind of set up a transition or a passing of the mantle, if you will, and some folks in the community have mentioned this, of the master and the widow or between the master and the widow. And I do think that, that she definitely will get her gift back and maybe even a portion of what was in the master as well will accompany that gift. But I do think that she will get that gift back because I feel like that was the completion, really the culmination of her training, the culmination of what the master was really trying to get her to see. How about though, the scene with the widow and child. That was an amazing fight scene. Some people thought that it didn't quite go long enough. I thought it was excellent. And when she lopped that head off, I was like, woo, bag it up. So you can show it to the people to let them know that the queen is dead and there's a new ruler in town. So I really love that whole fight sequence. I was really glad that they didn't kill my girl. Go team Tilda because I would have been upset because when they were torturing her, I was like, man, somebody, boy, take your hands off of her. Woo, don't mess with Tilda, I like her. But I was really happy to see that she did not go out. I was a little scared during that, you guys. I didn't know if she was gonna, <laughs> I thought she might kick the bucket. But I liked that whole sequence with, um, with, with, with the widow and how she goes to save Tilda and how she goes to save Gaius. I thought that was pretty cool. I also thought that it was cool the way that An Ankara was able to show her that. Now, let's talk a little bit about Ankara because people have said that they're really kind of sad to see her go that way because they wish that we could have seen more of her character in the show. I kind of agree with that. I thought that she was a really interesting character and I would have loved to have known more about her, but now especially, I really think that she was just a plot device. And I said that earlier on, she was just there, you guys, to move certain parts of this show along. She was there to introduce Pilgrim and Sonny, to put Sonny on that track to pursuing Pilgrim. She was there to heal Baji. She was there to send the widow on that mission to save Gaius and Tilda. She was, she was a plot device, that's what she was. But I think it's unfortunate because I would have liked to have learned more about her character. Thank you guys, as always, guys. I have started my Patreon page. You can check it out right there. Please go over there and see what you can do to support the growth of the channel. You are the best community on YouTube. I will see you in the comments. And of course, I will see you on the next video. Peace.